Hi everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Let's talk about ivermectin use for COVID-19. Now, if I had a dollar for every time I saw the word ivermectin, either in an online comment, in an email, people asking me about it, I would not be here right now. I'd probably be on a super yacht somewhere, lying back in the Caribbean, sipping a sangria. But alas, I'm not given a dollar for every time I see the word ivermectin. So why would we even be talking about ivermectin and COVID-19? Well, let's back up a little bit. Um, what is ivermectin? Well, it is a drug, an anti-parasitic drug that is actually used more in animals than humans. I think actually a few years ago, um, when our little Jack Russell Terrier was unwell, we actually, pres we actually had ivermectin prescribed for him um, to treat his infection. But I've rarely seen it used in humans. And I am a doctor who practices evidence-based medicine, as every doctor should be. And that is the ideal in medicine, in medical practice. We go on data, we follow the evidence, and if something is proven, whether it's a medication or treatment, then we recommend it. And let's think about all of the medications and treatments we've been using for COVID-19 so far. Back in March, April, May of 2020, there was a lot of buzz about using hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin. And sadly, it all got very politicized and the media got involved. But I can tell you, I worked in a, a few different hospitals at the time. And in at least a couple of them, the infectious disease departments were directing that we give hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin a try. And I don't think any of the patients had any adverse effects, but we were not sure whether it brought about any benefits either. And actually coming back to adverse effects, um, the media was actually um, overblowing, in my opinion, the potential toxic effects of hydroxychloroquine because it's actually a medication we use a lot in medicine for many different conditions, including malaria prophylaxis, and it's generally well tolerated in the right circumstances. However, come the summer of 2020, evidence started to come out, studies started to come out that hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin were not uh, bringing any significant benefits at all for our patients. And we therefore stopped using it when we saw that evidence come out. Then a few weeks later, more data started to come in showing that actually treating our patients with simple steroids when they were in the hospital was leading to better outcomes. And we have since been using steroids on most hospitalized patients with COVID-19, especially if they have low oxygen levels. And the particular steroid we're using is called dexamethasone. And it's amazing that such a cheap medication is bringing about such potential benefits. Um, other medications that we've tried, remdesivir, um, not likely to be as beneficial as steroids. Um, antibody treatment was tried for some time. Of course, as a medical and science community, we were trying a lot of different treatments because it, everything was, was new to us. And we have to remember, coming back to evidence-based medicine, that we go on medicines which can be proven in high-quality studies. And as yet, with ivermectin, there is no such high quality data available. And isolated case reports are simply not enough. It's, it's not enough to say, oh yes, my mother's, uncle's, cousin's, sister's friend got this treatment, got ivermectin and did better. That's not enough to justify its use. What we have to have ideally are high quality randomized control trials to prove anything. But this gets to a bigger point at how difficult viruses are to treat. They're not like treating bacterial infections in any way. They are very tough and, and generally beyond supportive measures. There's very little else which is hugely proven. And I wish and I hope this happens in our lifetime that viral infections will be like giving an antibiotic. We have an, an amazing arsenal of antibiotics to treat bacterial infections and we, and we can quickly reverse the course of any bacterial infection. Um, at least most of them in the hospital, but we can't quite do that with viruses. They're a little bit more tricky to treat. I am, again, an evidence-based medicine doctor, and the way I was trained was to always try to critically think. I don't treat anything, even if it's a national guideline, as some sort of tablet from God. I always go and look at data and evidence myself, and that's what every doctor, every healthcare professional should strive to do. And we have to see for ourselves, 
if um, a treatment is overwhelmingly proven to be beneficial and the benefits outweigh the risks, then we recommend it. That's the core basis of the practice of medicine. And sadly, I think that critical thinking is going out of the window, especially in the United States. That's something we have to get back in the medical field. It's important to keep asking questions and looking at data. But as for ivermectin, I don't think that there's enough out there to justify all of the online buzz that I've seen surrounding this medication. And I'm probably one of the most open-minded doctors you could meet on social media. I'm always up for debate and I don't even think necessarily everything that I'm saying is going to be definitively true in a few years time. I know that medicine is in a constant state of flux and we're getting more data and learning more all the time. That's a reality of medicine and science and that's actually a good thing. It only becomes a bad thing when the people who are in it don't realize that. So if anyone out there has any evidence on ivermectin and I'm looking for high quality randomized control trials, please feel free to send it to me. I can certainly take a look at it. Feel free to send a link in the comments down below or send me an email. But as of now, it's May 2021. I have not seen any evidence whatsoever to strongly support using ivermectin in COVID-19 patients. Thanks for listening, Dr. Sunil Dan. Follow me on YouTube and Facebook, MedStoic Lifestyle Medicine. We will speak again next time.